Welcome back everyone to It Moves, an RPG horror game that I've had a lot of fun with. So, it's funny how, let's get right into this, it's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness alone, frightened, aware of a rotten change in the atmosphere. A thickening of the air as if something had displaced it. As I heard the first casual twist of the bed, she just sleep in the bottom bunk. First anxious increase in my heartbeat at the realization that something was once again in the bottom bunk. That word, a word which has been set to exile, filtered up through my consciousness, breaking free of all repression, gasping for air, screaming, etching, and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. As this thought came to me, I noticed that my one welcome video had ceased moving. The sheets lay calm and dormant, but they had been placed by something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, rasping, breathing, heavy, haved, and escaped from the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising and falling with each sordid, wheezing, and garbled breath. I shuddered, and hoped beyond all hope that it would leave without occurrence. The house lay as it had been the previous night, a thick, blanket of darkness, silence prevailed, all but the per perverted breath of my and yet unseen bunkmates I lay there terrified. I just wanted things to go, to leave me alone. What did it want? It wanted you to sleep in the bottom bunk, because the top bunk was it. So that's why I tortured your brother and which why I wanted a new room. Then something mistakenly chilling transpired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw itself around the bottom bunk, it seemed unrestrained, without purpose, almost animalistic. But that thing lying there in the darkness, that thing which seemed to be terrorizing a young boy, calmly and nonchalantly sat up. Its labored breathing had become louder. That's breathing? It sounds like screeching. Now only a mattress and a few flimsy wooden uh, slats are separated my body from an unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears, all oh, a fear which mere words cannot relate to you or anyone else course through my veins. I would not believe that was this fear could have been heightened, but I was so wrong. I imagined that this would have looked like sitting there listening from below on my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination tur then turned to an unnerving reality. It began to touch the wooden slates which my master sat on. It seemed to caress them carefully, running what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of the wood. Oh, I actually scared me. Off. Then, with great force, it prodded angrily between two flat the two slats into my mattress. Even though the padding, it felt as though someone had viciously stuck their fingers into my side. I allowed an almighty cry, and then wheezing, shaking, and moving thing in my bunk below replied, in kind by violently vibrating the bunk as they had done the night before. Small flakes of paint powdered under my blanket from along the wall as the fr frame of the bread scraped along it backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light. And there stood my mother, loving, caring as she always was, with a comforting hug and calming words which eventually subdued my hysteria. Of course she asked what was wrong. I could not say, I dared not say. I simply said one word over and, and over and over and over again. Nightmare. That raspiness is going to hurt my voice, and I don't know. This is long, I don't know how much I can do with this. This pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of rustling sheets. Each time, I would scream so as to not provide this abomination with time to prod and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake violently, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force tormenting her so nightly. That's because you're not telling her. Just tell her. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times and come up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. The room where the light from outside did not sit right. Alone. With that thing. With time, you can become des desensitized to almost anything, no matter how horrific. 
I had come to realize that, for whatever reason, this thing would not harm me when my mother was present. I am sure that the same would have been said for my father, as long as loving as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4 I assume Chapter 4. Yeah, anger overload. Save, yes please. Of course, door's locked, and there's a spiky hook. Hook came from the wall, a piece of meat hangs dry to it. Doesn't look dry, it looks very bloody. Hello? Earthquake? No, that's the thing rattling and shaking below the bed. Painted glass for some sort of religious man looks. It's Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Please save me from nightmares. The painted glass is a picture see from the Bible, and it's shining red. I don't like that. It can stop that. Another spider? You okay, you're not gonna say anything about the spider. Heads. Various shards of disgusting stuff inside. Ooh, hi. More earthquake. Oh man, that's loud. Another one. The uh, heads of some sort. Baby heads. Jars, disgusting stuff inside. Blah blah blah. Let's keep pressing forward to make our boldness new. Be cool, but I'd rather not use it. Uh, because there's a giant floating head in the center. Fire leaves this net. There's this net is nowhere to be seen, but it's huge. I don't want I don't want to find that somewhere. Let's see a map. Make sure it picks a couple men standing in front of the car. Hello? Uh, hello? What's on the wall here? Are these hanged cats? They look like cats hanging from the windowsill. No, 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 no. Let me out, please. Let me out, please. Okay, I guess we're not going out, please. Uh, can I do anything here? Can I do anything at all here? Uh, uh can you not be... Oh, my. Oh, no, 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 no. Can we not do this? No, 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 okay. Was I just eaten? I have many questions. That's starting me more than I probably should have. Stop, please. Ah, oh, that's... That's a noise most foul. Why are, they all, why are you all closing your mouths? Please stop. Why are you closing your mouths? Oh, this is creepy. This is very creepy. Do we have to do this a third time? Ah, and you're, yeah. Now, what happens if I go backwards? I can't go backwards. Why can't I go backwards? Okay, and there's nothing that says I can't go backwards. Wait, all of your mouths are closed now. Why are all of your mouths closed? Are you into some secret that I'm not a part of? Should I close my mouth too? Oh, what's that noise? That I just started to notice that noise. Oh, that is... That is not a nice noise. It's like a chainsaw. A baby's... Insidious laughter, and then like a zombie mode, like all in one, and then like someone ripping a sweet ass fart, as opposed to the sweet mouth fart, aka the burp. How many times do we gonna have to go through this? They're sort of like a little sad, actually. Not that one. That one's just creepy. What was that? Was that a baby? Why is there a baby? Why are there so many screens of this? Why is there a noise in my ear? Oh my! 
No, no, no. Can I jump? Can I jump? Oh. Okay, we'll go this way. No, no. Let me. Demon baby, let me progress. Those are horrible noises. Why is it all staticky? My greatest fears were realized in the winter. The days grew short and the longer nights merely provided the wretch with more opportunities. It was a difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerative illness, robbing a person of their memories one day at a time. Let her sleep in my bottom bunk. I'll keep her happy. Uh, soon she recognized none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved to, from her home to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had a particularly difficult few nights, and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and felt nothing but anguish at her illness, to this day I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightmare nightly visitor may do should it become aware of my mother's absence. Her presence, being the one that, thing that I was sure was protective, protecting me from the full horror that this thing's reach, I rushed home from school that day and immediately rushed to the beach uh, bed sheets and mattress over my lower bunk. Removing all of the slats and placing an old desk and ch chest of drawers and some chairs which we kept from a, in a cupboard where the bottom bunk used to be. Okay, that was too, that was a full sentence. I told my father I was making an office which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I'd give that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into her jewelry box take a small family crucifix, which I'd seen there before. While my family were not very religious, at that age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious, while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came, and as I drifted off into uh, off to dream, I hoped that I would awaken in the morning without incidents. Fortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. That last night was fucking... Dude, demon babies. I don't like demon babies. There are some things in this world that should not be a thing. Chapter 5, Urban Explorer. Alright, let's see what happens here. Ooh. Let's get into this. Save? Yes, please. I would love to save. Saving's a fun thing. It says Wolf. Bow Wow. Doggy Doggy. Can I play the piano? Poorly! But I can. Why are some of these red and some of these... It knows what I had done, and so it uses a, a school type setting, not like an office type setting for a child. The feeling that someone, something's invading your privacy, even without ill will, is still disturbing. It's stalking me. It's like a, the guy in the first chapter said, he's stalking. Hello? Hi, squid monster. You are good. Thank you. I'm a good boy. Thank you for noticing. I accept all the credit for this. Oh. Even if you don't know why they are here, you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. The ten you're talking about the, like, the, the squid face tentacle monster thing, Majigs. Pi and Triceratops. So the letter Pi, what is this? An old picture of what seems to be a religious man and a woman. Uh, bathtub in the middle of the classroom. The sounds of screams are awful, and they are even worse when they are your own. Newspaper articles to H. Reed. Uh, I don't want to go downstairs quite yet. Maybe I should have. It's locked now. What did I see? What did I just see? Now, this is a very decrepit uh, schoolhouse. Right in some sort of desk material and blah 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 blah. Nothing inside, nothing inside, nothing inside. There seems to be a letter over here. Uh, school material. Okay, so nothing's in here. I don't know if there's anything, anything I need to pick up. I don't know if I have an inventory or whatever. No, that's just a letter crate. I don't think I have an inventory. A uh, piece of paper here reads knock knock. Who is it? Text is now illegible. Uh. 
Okay. Man, I want to see what the fucking paper says now. Is it still legible or after I enter the door? The text is still legible. Okay. Whew. That was not fun. Okay, I guess we're going to go downstairs. And see a thing. Door is broken. I don't think I can get in here. How, how does a broken door prevent entry? What the hell did I just find? Hang on, I, w I want to try to get up here. There's nothing in this room. These things are just obstacles for no apparent reason. What are you anyway? That one stopped. Why did that one stop? And they seem to get louder when I'm near them. Uh, various school rules printed here. What are some of the rules? Is one of them become a... Man, it's probably down the fucking thing. Plants grow through cracks in the floor. Uh, swinging light bulbs, that's always a good sign. What's the machine of some sort? Let's just uh, go down the ladder. Because we have to play out the nightmare. Uh. Oh, not more of this crap. Hang on. Is that the same room? No, it's not the same room. So, I want to check out this side room first. I'm going to see what's all in, all in these rooms. Okay, there's no side room. That's a lie. I don't know if I'm going the right way. Okay, so I think I go up. And that takes me here. And then I think if I go up again, but this time to the left, okay, that's a new room. Up again, back to the left, nope, takes me back here. So, each one of these has a, a whole bunch of different option points. And so you have to go pick the right path each time or you get sent back to the beginning, as a traditional magical labyrinth wants to do. Uh, this is a very common thing in terms of magical labyrinths. Are magical labyrinths common? Fuck no. No, of course not. That's why I like magical labyrinths. Very interesting, very neat sort of a uh, concept thing that uh, I don't like these noises, especially the especially like the demonic moose noise. That's like the one of the most disturbing of all. Oh man, this is a uh, this is a good one. I really like this. Oh, I'm gonna crank this back up so I can really appreciate the moose. Hang on, what did I? F what did I find here? Hello, hi everyone. Hello. Yes. No. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay. I am. I am a little boy. Sacrifice. I should what? What is going on here? And why are these narwhal squid? people hybrid things that paint with red things all of him chanting rhythmically while a clown man does like this thing to me I'm just a little boy could you not cut me open and sacrifice me to the dark lord satan that would be great if you just didn't do that I'm sure he likes my entrails quite a lot, but no! <sighs> anyway, you're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. No, I'm certainly not lonely. <laughs> I've got plenty of company. Alrighty then. I've got more company than I fucking want. That is basier than I wanted it to be. I woke gradually. 
the room was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the doors and the walls and some shores and stuff. Even as I shuddered to think about them, there was no noise. No rustling in the sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless, lifeless, but not empty. Nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, heat filled thing which terrorized me night after night. It's not in the bottom bunk. It was not. It was in my bed. Give me a sweet BJ. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, then I would not want to. I would not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It's spoony. I was obscured under my blanket. I could see its outline, and I could feel its presence, but I dared not look. Where is it on here? I can't really see it. Oh, that's where it is. Wait a bit pressed down on top of me. Sensation I would never forget. When I say that hours passed, I did not exaggerate. Laying there motionless in the darkness was every bit as scary, uh, scared and frightened the young boy. If I would have been dur during the summer months, it would have been light by then. But this grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise, a sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I reached a breaking point, a moment where I could wait no more, where I'd survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you threadbare, a shell of nerves, leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I had to get out of that bed, and I remember the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it, minim minimizing as best as I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. It either knocked it off or it had. I cannot bear to think it had been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened by it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant, passive, not do doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope that I can make it to the door? What if it's faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of that top bunk, hoping to disturb it on the uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that it had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have a strange of thoughts. It knew to give a blue jab. Blow jab, not blue jab. Chapter 6, The Abyss. So what, I just went back to sleep, I guess? I guess? I don't know. Am I underwater? I'm underwater. Sure, I'll save. I'm underwater. Hello, fish friends. Friendly fish. Where am I? I think I'm supposed to go into the abyss, no? No, I can't go. I can't swim down. Can I swim up? No, I can't swim. I, well, I, can, I probably could swim up earlier, but not. No, I can't swim up. Where am I going? Am I even going the right way? I mean... It's... T Hello. What are you? Are you a button for me to press? Hello, first friend. I feel like I shouldn't go in here. Well, I mean... Is that my dad? That's my dad. Well, shitty titties. Drain water and move gear. Yes. I think I'm supposed to do that. That's an interesting option that you're giving me. The fact that I'm a small child with the knowledge is my dad. Why is my dad in my nightmare? No, please don't let anything bad happen. I really like my dad. I mean, I've got no connections. Logbook, yes. Captain Theodore Fielding, one of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider the fact that I am now working on a mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench. I have always wondered why I was afraid and reached a simple conclusion. A true fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface into the depths. It's a combination of all of our most common fears. One, fear of the dark. This is actually very long. It gets dark really fast, about 10 feet down. You know, when you're nothing compared to the deepest part of the entire crust of the Earth, located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, which is about 
38,000 feet. Put amount of energy at the bottom of the trench. The top of the mountain would still be a mile below the surface. Yeah, it is dark. It is deep. Uh, fear of suffocating. Uh, fear of the unknown. Um, because I'm just going to read the things. Fear of flying insects, which is weird, but there are weird things in the ocean, as you can see with this fishy thing here. That thing, we don't even know. We've never been to the Mariana Trash. I don't know if you guys know that, but like, no one has ever like explored the bottom of that. We don't know what's down there. It's either too dark and our it, or it's too much pressure. It's both of those things, actually. Um, the pressure, like, we can't make something that can survive the sheer water pressure, because it's a lot of pressure. There's probably something that lives down there. I mean, it's used to it. I mean, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please put something in there, because I want to know, like, what's down there, because I'm really curious. Fear of being caught. Uh, caught and eaten, blah, blah, blah. Uh, something's truly frightening, such as the giant squib, uh... Cool. Okay. So now we're in the Mariana Trench. With what appears to be some sort of a jellyfish. And an anglerfish. A giant anglerfish. Oh my goodness gracious. Is that my dad? Out in the ocean? What are you doing, Dad? 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 No, 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 this is but no. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I was eaten by a large tentacle mon- I was eaten what appears to be Cth by Cthulhu, it appears. Sacrificed by my own dad. Come on, man. Come on, Charles. What if I? What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much breathe since I woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it finally got me. I finally was in my grasp, or perhaps it was just toying with me. After all, uh, I, did, I hit space and accident. And now, with it under, with me under it, pinned against my mattress, and nothing with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible, and mustering every ounce of courage I could. I reached over slowly with my right hand, began to pee peel a bl blanket off of me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved, the blanket brushed against something. Something smooth and cold. Something which unmistakably felt like a gaunt hand. I held my breath in terror as I was sure it must now know that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt thin, poorly formed forearm. My confident and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved further down. It was a large, a disproportionately larger bicep. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with my, right, uh, my hand resting on my left, my left shoulder, as if the hand grabbed me in my sleep. It had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cada uh, cadaverous appendage if I ever, even so much as hoped to escape its grasp. For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on my shoulder of this. Uh, nighttime invaders stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and my chest, and I uh, recoiled my hand in disgust at the uh, strangled, oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, though I wondered this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. It said the name of the thing. No, the, thing's, uh, the name of the thing is it moves, but. Hostia. Chapter 7. I feel like I'm pretty much just being taken on a ride. Save? Uh, I mean, I guess. I might as well. I mean, I don't think any... Hello? Hello? Oh, hello. What are you? You're huge. I don't want anything in the part of you. I feel like I'm just being taken on a ride. I feel like there's nothing, like, of danger. Like there was in Eve. I guess we're going into this thing. That's perfectly normal, right? Oh man, I. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I mean, technically, yeah. Since, you know, there's only two. Um, I mean, technically, only one. Because if we have a complete, like, apocalypse sort of scenario, in which case all governments are destroyed, taxes were not paying. 
I'm not paying stupid taxes. Death is the only certainty in life. What am I looking at? What is this place? Where am I? Am I inside of some sort of meat creature? Hang on. I feel like I should talk to the first one first. At a crossroads in life, what does one do? Stand at the crossroads if you will, but if you do not choose, I'll move without you. And having once chosen, never seek to return to that crossroads of that decision. For even if one chooses wrongly, the choice cannot be unmade. That's very true. That's also very good advice. Law of love for travel. Okay. Law of love for travel. Okay, you bitch. Love. Okay. Okay. Now, based on what those guys said, I can't. I probably can't go backwards. Okay. So what am I to do now? Those guys say I can't go. I can't go back. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to go back. Oh, I guess I was supposed to go back. Hello, awkwardly realistic looking man. Machine man person thing. What are you doing? Why are you playing music? What was that? I saw that. I want to find out what it is when I edit this video, but what, what, what were you? Not you. You're fine. You're beautiful. That was hideous. I saw you again. That would look like a mouth of sorts. Can I just leave? Can I go in a different room? And is there anything I can actually, like... I'm just spamming the use button, guys. Yeah, no, I'm just along for the ride. Maybe I did something right there? But there was a... It moved. It was subtle, but it... Flip on my shoulder across my body, strength and no tears came, but God, how oh, I wanted to cry. As its ha hand and arm slowly coiled around me, my left leg brushed along the cool wall which the bed lay against. Of all that happened to me in that room, that was the strangest. Whoa, you're creepy. I realized that this clutching rancid thing which drew great light from violating the young boy's bed, was not entirely on top of me. It was sticking out from the wall like a spider striking its lair. Suddenly, a grip moved from a slow tightening to a sudden squeeze, pulled and clawed at my clothes as if frightened that the opportunity would soon pass. Fought against it, but the emancipated arm was way too strong for me. Its head rose up really and contorting under the blanket. And I realized where it was taking me. Into the wall, I fought for my dear life and cried and suddenly my voice returned to me, yelling and screaming but no one came. Then I realized why I was so eager to strike suddenly, why this thing had to have me now. Through my window, that window which seemed to re represent so much malice from outside, streaked hope, first rays of sunshine struggled further, knowing that if I could just hold on, it would soon be gone. Ugh. As I fought for my life, the unearthly parasite shifted, slowly pulling itself up to my chest. It said now poking out from which is under the blanket, wheezing, coughing, screaming, where's my brother? I do not remember its features, I simply remember its breath against my face, bow and cold as ice. As the sun broke over the horizon, the dark place, that suffocating room of contempt was washed, bathed in sunlight, I passed out as its scrawny fingers encircled my neck, squeezing the very life from me. I woke to my father, offering to make me some breakfast. A wonderful sight indeed. I had survived the most horrible experience of my life until then, and now I moved from the bed away from the wall, leaving behind the furniture I had believed would stop that thing from taking a bed. Little did I think that it would try to take mine, and me. Weeks passed without incident, yet, uh, yet on one cold, frostbitten night, I woke to the sound of the furniture, where the bunk beds used to be vibrating violently. I lay there as sure as I could to hear a distant wheezing coming from deep within the wall. I want to just finish this up. I know we're running long, but finally fading in the distance because it feels very final. 
The following year, I was given a larger room on the other side of the house, and my parents took the room that was their bedroom. They said they didn't need a large room, just one big enough for a bed and a few things. They lasted 10 days. We moved out on the 11th. Because crazy shit happened. This is a very cool story. It moves, game by Snow Owl. Very good job, dude. This was, a. Uh... I'm in control here. Let's find out what happens. Is there anything here? Is there any way I'm supposed to go? Any direction? Based on the story Bedtime by Michael Whitehouse. Playtesting by Optical Mouse. Scripts by some cool people. Okay, good job, guys. I just want to see if there's anything like if if I just keep walking in this direction, am I gonna find anything? I'm just spamming the use button too. I don't know if there's anything in this direction. Let's start heading in this direction. Oh, no, uh, it's over. Okay. The end! Alright. Well, that's uh that's it moves, guys. Um so Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I had a lot of fun with this. <laughs> oh, it moves. <laughs> uh, I'll see if, that, if that's anything, but I don't think that's anything. So, um, I guess thank you all so much for watching. Uh, click those annotations. I'll be coming up real shortly uh, for more videos I've done. And as always, I love you all so much. And uh, see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Trimpy balls is the exact opposite of what I need to do. I also need to put this down. And see if I can fall. Oh, there you are. Okay. See you. See you. You're not going to get the better of me. I'm just going to stare you down. I know you can. I know you see that I see you. And he's gone. Okay. That's awesome. I want to just check to make sure I'm not going to have a ventilation error anytime soon because that made me trip out. That's snow. Why is it snowing now? Why can't I enter this? Who did this to you? What in the world? <laughs>